All right, everyone, we're back at the piano with another jam session with Chopin Fantasy Impromptu. This is such a nice piece, and it's actually, while it may seem a little difficult at first, it's kind of feels right for the hands. So we're gonna go through this whole piece, or as much as possible, and look at, uh, at situations that are kind of difficult, so things that will make it a bit easier to practice, uh, different ways of practicing, and also musical things, because uh, those two things are really important. So, the Fantasy Improv 2, uh, it's, it's kind of like a um, beginner piece for a, let's say, uh, a beginner professional, or let's say an advanced amateur, something like that. It's a, it's a rather easy Chopin piece. Uh, and it's really, really nice. So let's just go right into it. Now, I've only been, I never really learned this piece. I started looking at it a few days ago so, so we could look at this together. And here goes, because there's a lot of things that while it may seem easy, there's actually a lot of things that, that can be quite tricky and, and not so easy to practice. All this... <laughs> Versus three stuff. So, so when you have this, I think it's okay to uh, start with a little bit of a little slower. Let's go right into the musical... Let's do technique first, actually. By the way, the fingerings in the Paderewski edition are very good. Uh, there's just a few things I would change. I, I had looked at this piece when I was about 16, and I remember I would always do this with a three. This two with a three. And I see Paderewski has four, and somehow now I'm just switching to four and finding four really a lot easier to put four on this C-sharp. Here I still like to put the three in, but sometimes I just put four for fun. So, now, musically in here, what we have that's really probably overlooked a lot is this... We should go in some way towards the middle of the bar. This is very important because of what we're going to have after. So this is kind of like... It doesn't have to be a crescendo. You can do a crescendo to just start to feel it. So that would be something like... But you can do the same thing with diminuendo. the same sort of thing. So it's not about uh, a volume and dynamic of sound. It's more a question of focus. This thing is going... And then you can try to do it without doing any change in dynamic whatsoever. Since we do have this hairpin uh, on the third bar where the right after the right hand comes in. So that would do something like... No crescendo, no diminuendo is possible. You can do either of these three things as long as it goes from the beginning of that bar. Let's call that the first bar where the right hand comes in. There's a kind of focus and intention towards the center of the bar. This is going towards here. And then here we have a, a hairpin written, so crescendo, diminuendo towards the center of the bar. That is rather complicated. So with this crescendo, all the way. So it's kind of like we have a one object here in one bar. It lasts one bar, and we go towards the center. Now we have another object here. It lasts another entire bar. We go to the center. It's the same thing repeated. Now we have this, which is the way it's written. Two bars, 
and we go to the second, uh, let's say the first quarter. So we have one, two, three, four. So we go towards the second, uh, how would you say this? Towards the center of the first bar. It's not really second anything unless you count this like this, one, two, three, four, then we go to the second one. So the, in other words, uh, the first uh, two bars with the right hand, bar five and six, we're going towards the middle of the bar. And then bar seven and eight, this is one thing, and we're going towards just the middle of the first bar, and then the tail of this is longer. So that sounds something like to the center, moving to the center, and now. So the ending of it is longer. Now we have, again, once more. And now. So this one, even if it's written with one slur over here, this is no longer the same. Once you have that A sharp, it's not. I think you have to think of this as. is going somewhere towards, uh, let's say now we have a three bar. So we had a one bar, one bar, two bars, one bar, and now three bars all the way until this thing here. And now we're going to go somewhere closer towards the end of this, at least this, the middle of the second of those three bars, which would be here. So, and I think that's the way it's really written with a crescendo. So let's go to the beginning of the third bar. So we have something like this. Okay, now let's look at some of the complications we're going to have. This is all we're going to do for today. This, this is a rather complicated thing. So we have this wheel going up, and then a bunch of rotations which go on the fourth finger like this. So this is going like this, around, and then all these rotations on the fourth finger while we're going down in our wheel. Now, I think one of the things that will help the most in here is focus on the second and third fingers. They're like the support that holds the structure of the entire hand. So, these two notes, again, these two notes, that's really good. If you're not able to do this very, very clean, Think of these two fingers and they're very, very, uh, very uh, secure where they are. So sometimes just concentrating on it can do the job. But another thing that really helps is to rest in the key. So play those fingers and rest so that you're not just like skidding on the key. So something like that. It should help a lot. Let me know how this, how this goes with the second and third fingers in this passage. This is true about a lot of things, especially the second finger. The problem that we have is often, so often always around the second finger. So now another thing that's complicated in this is this is a good piece to practice this the rhythm. And, well, we could do another entire session on, on pra just practicing that rhythm. But probably you have to do it very slowly. I'm just going to assume that, that if you're playing this piece, you're probably comfortable doing that already. So, okay, this pretty much sums up just that first section up until bar 13. So this shouldn't come as a surprise, or at least
least a a sudden attack, and then you, that note is also important. This is uh, very similar to. again to the middle uh, and then when this repeats again uh, where is this so this is different from we don't go we keep going with this okay so that sums up this, uh, just for a first part, we're going to have a part two come up pretty soon, and we'll keep looking at that. Okay, stay in tune. We're going to have another master class coming up soon, uh, which will be announced on YouTube this time, and uh, keep working on this amazing piece, part two coming up soon.